So it's the evening after the night before. I know we didn't lose, but it really does feel like a loss. Forest one, Palace mm -hmm. one. Let's let's get into the show. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to an earlier than normal Grumpy Old Reds. Hope you're all doing well. Hungry are Old we, Reds. Right? Are we live? Because it's a zero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we are live. Zero, yeah. yeah, we're live, just nobody's watching. We just, just lost all our viewers overnight. <laughs> oh, my God. This must be what like it feels like to be another YouTuber. Uh, it's a zero, man. Yeah, you, nearly, you nearly said it. <laughs> you nearly yeah. said it. Oh, wait, no. It's the, um, it's the Twitter thing. Okay. Okay, anyway, all sorted. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, yeah, I, I've listen, I've had my my say on my video today. I, I've got to admit, mm -hmm. I do feel a lot better. It's quite therapeutic. I got it all off there, right? <laughs> so I'm a little better today, but I want the boys and you guys in the chat to get your say in. So, and let's kick it off with you, man, because you inspired me to my video today, and and I don't know if that scares me or not, <laughs> but it did. <laughs> Yeah, well, as you, as most people will know, I was not Nuno wasn't my first choice in in the first place. I did say to everybody, he's, he is a defensive coach, and nobody wanted to listen. And I was proven totally wrong for the first few games, and I was glad. I thought, brilliant, I've got it wrong. However, I think now we're seeing the real Nuno, and I'm getting real Steve Cooper vibes. As you mentioned in your video, I said to you last last night. I feel the same now about the team sheet coming out as I felt in the Cooper. Please don't fuck it up. Please don't fuck you fucked it up. Mm. Yeah. And and the fans around me and the people I speak to certainly seem to feel the same way. We can't, surely we can't all be wrong, can we? And I said on the last show, for me, this is a nine game audition for Nuno. I've had enough. I don't I don't need another eight <laughs> games of this show. It's not a long audition. Go on. So no. what's your plan? No, what are you yeah, saying? Be no good good plan. Plan. Although I said the next nine games, mm. I was disregarding the past, what, eight games, uh, ten games. Yeah. 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 But I can't disregard that anymore because that yesterday for me was shocking. The team selection was shocking, awful. Mm. No Dominguez. Are you crazy? Are you mad? What's he done I, wrong? You've got no football knowledge whatsoever. No Dominguez. You're, you, you, you're not fit to manage, mate. You're not fit to manage. And I saw nothing in that game yesterday that looked any different to when we were under Steve Cooper. I'm sorry, but there it is. And as far as I'm concerned, no, he, he's, he's not the man for us. Now, Are you out then? Are you now out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, get him out now, today. And do you not feel... <laughs> just... him, we'll get this famous new manager bounce, two wins, we're free. <laughs> you don't and believe don't in a new manager bounce. What are you talking what about? For the last 10 games, for the next nine, uh, next eight games. I don't want to see it. And I've and got a feeling not, that, that's what we're going to see. Do you not think, despite, I agree with you on the starting lineup, and I think we all do, I don't think anybody would have picked that uh, sense about pairing. And now I'll, I'll give my reasons on why I uh, didn't want it in the first place. But do you not think, I mean, let's go to the last half hour when we did have Rainer on the pitch. Did, did, do you not think he got it right eventually yesterday? No, no, absolutely not. Mm -mm. I was mm. sat there literally about 30 seconds before he bought Rainer on. And mm. I said, he's got to bring Rainer on. Put him in the middle, take a Rigi off, and put a Langer on the right. He didn't do that. Yeah. He put, mm, kept yeah. a Rigi on the, on the right. He bought a Langer on and put him as a, as a number ten. Yeah. Well, you mad? Mm. The Langer's never been a number ten. He's not the right sort of player. He's not. Mm. His delivery's not He's good. Enough. A winger these days, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, his delivery's not good enough, and his shooting's not good enough to be a number ten. Simple as. Mm -hmm. So. No, yes, I, personally, I don't think he did get the subs right. I mean, I think once he's put Rainer on, on the right wing, took Origi off and put Rainer on as a number ten, and kept and I, then put Morgan as well as number eight. I think we yeah. would have been a lot better. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he got. He didn't get it right at half time. I didn't understand that. Just he should have made a double switch at half time. But once he bought Rainer on and he played him in more of a ten and um. Uh, obviously, Morgan Gibbs White more than eight. Did you not think he got it right then? Because that's when he did take Origi off no. and put Alanga out there. No, I think he stumbled on it. I think he mm. stumbled on it. I don't think he thought, I know what I'm going to do, blah, blah, blah. Because mm. if he was thinking that, he'd done it earlier. I think it was literally a case of, I've got to get this kid on and mm. let's hope something happens. And Rainer was great. Rainer was 
Yeah. I thought we did great. Well. And, and Morgan Gus White playing a little playing a little deeper really worked. That combination looks good to me. But I want yeah. an anger on the right. I mean, once in the door on the left, wood in the middle, and I would be comfortable with that. But I'm afraid. And also, why did he play Felipe? I've already told you that Felipe's mm -hmm. done. I told you that. <laughs> you said it. Was the, not, was, was the man not the, listening? The problem. The problem we've got, Anne, is that Nuno just wasn't watching the last goal where he implemented this the, is it. the I think Forest this is, and, I think this and, is and going wrong. tactics. Yeah, mm. that's, I think we that's, need to contact the club and make sure that they order him to watch the podcast. Yeah. All the right, thing well, that really annoys me let's about give you know, crypto there was no way he's in spain he could have been in the antarctic there was no way he was gonna miss tonight's stream. he's got to go out in a bit but he still found time to come onto the stream. Yeah. i wonder why crypto go on have your moment <laughs> in the sun go on. look i told all you lot all you lot in the chat giving me grief that morgan gives white should drop into the eight and uh rayner should drop into the ten and shock horror who was right crypto rider was right so yeah. listen to listen to the man listen listen to the listen to the man look the thing don't that annoys me about Nuno, mangala as well crypto the don't, man don't, with the don't, get me, don't get me started on mangala there's a reason i've got a rainer shirt uh, <clears throat> and a mangala shirt um you know so um look the thing that annoys me about nuno is it's always it's always too little too late that, I think that's the most frustrating thing for me. I'm not, I'm not Nuno out yet, but he doesn't seem to be learning by his mistakes, which is what really frustrated me about Cooper. Um, so he needs to. I've said this. I've said this to you guys. I don't understand how you know fifty thousand Forest fans can see what the issue is, but the guys who have paid the big bucks to manage the team can't, mm. because everyone can see it. Everyone can see that Felipe shouldn't have started because he hasn't quite got the legs in him. Not saying Felipe's bad. But he's not as fast as um, Obama Delhi. Everyone could see that Origi doesn't work with Wood. He's never worked with Wood. You know, Wood and, Wood and Origi are good players on their own, but not together on the pitch. He's not the type of player. <laughs> Nicky's making me laugh, man, in the comments. <laughs> um, and then, you know, it's just it, it, Yates, you know, we'll get into Yates later, but I'm, I'm not going to slag Yates off because he's not a scapegoat. And I don't think anyone had a particularly good game but it, you know we need to control that midfield i thought morgan gives white looked absolutely brilliant in the eight um he was he was controlling it he was making passes he was making plays what we need is a defensive midfielder alongside him who can who can put in the work someone like dominguez um and, and control that midfield alongside him so you know it's it's obvious it's obvious what needs to change for me I'm going to give him another match. I think Tuesday night against Fulham, you know, we can implement these tactics again. On paper, we should be able to beat Fulham. It's not, it's not like a Man City or an Arsenal. So, look, he's got, to, he's got to make the changes correctly for Tuesday and he's got to make the right subs. And if he doesn't, then... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get me an Anon. We'd be in there at half-time going absolutely mad at them after that first half performance. <laughs> so, which one... <laughs> Who's the tailor? I mean, I'm clearly Brian Clough, so... Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, we'll have to discuss this, but let's move on. Let's not fall out on screen. Uh, uh, let's, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Rob, what, what was, um, what's your take on everything? Oh, I mean, uh, crypto and Anne is Clough and Taylor. That's just taking me over the edge. Oh, my here. God. <laughs> right, firstly, I... I'm taking credit for retiring Felipe because after the Villa game, I said he's probably played his last game for Forest, and you you jumped on the bandwagon. So anyway, <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> you got to see it. You got to see it. Too early, if you're nice finished. Yeah. Anyway, right. So obviously, everybody wants the glory, don't they? Everybody. Let's uh, <laughs> let's try and stay a little bit more positive, right? I mean, obviously, no, we're not onto the positive bits yet. No, it's my job. Bit, it's my job to say something different. So as as I went into the ground, <laughs> I was thinking, Opposition. right, no more kicking the can down the road. We've got to yes. win. I don't want a draw. No draws today. And then ten minutes Ooh, later, like we're being totally overrun in midfield. Started the game just like the Luton game. Um, Sangari yeah. and Yates being totally overrun. That boy Wharton in in midfield seemed to have a mm. lot of space. And um, we started on the back foot, just like the first 10, 15 minutes against Luton. And within 10 minutes, I'm thinking, 
I hope we get a draw. Please, can we just have a draw? <laughs> <laughs> that, and then I, I must say that that everybody in the ground was incredibly nervous. Uh, or I certainly picked up on that vibe. I mean, they did some displays and some flag waving at the start, and but mm. everybody was absolutely bricking it, and with good reason. And when it got to half time, and I looked and I saw Luton were winning at Tottenham, it was like uh, mm. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, hello, darkness, my old friend. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this, this cannot get any worse. Than this, right? You know, because four it's, points adrift, Robert. Yeah, so, Half time, so, we were so four points the, adrift by the end of the game. Um, I would say, considering that things ended four points different to they were at halftime, I actually came away thinking, feeling. I mean, can we all just thank Chris Wood for what he did yesterday because he really mm. lifted everybody in the stadium. That was like the one moment of quality. If it hadn't been for that. Uh, there might have been, you know, riots. What, or, what about Matt? What about Matt Sells, uh, Rob? Well, I know. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, can we? Do, so, so actually, we do like some of the players. We don't want to sell them all, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I almost did a reaction video to your video, right? I, I think you're being <laughs> overly harsh on um, our players, right? Because if the, if the crowd are nervous, we can't expect the players to be like, you know, Zen. Right. I mean, I would say um, there there are evidently some players in the team who just are mercenaries and don't really care about the club. Right. I don't want to name names, but I could think of maybe three or I four. Will. Right. Maybe three or four in that team selection. But on the flip side, there are some that act that clearly give a shit. Right. Uh, Callum Hudson Adoy, uh, probably the, the best example. Late on in the game, there was a moment where he tried to take somebody on. He mm. lost the ball and he chased back 40 yards, tackled and mm. put it into touch. Cross field, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you can name him on one hand, Rob. No, 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 no. Come on. Right, so, Who else cares? Who else cares? N Nico Williams, Sells, Williams. Wood, Ryan Yates. Okay, so that's half a team. If right? Yates that's cared, he team. wouldn't play. Right. Okay. Give <laughs> He'd recuse himself from the damn team. If he cared, don't give me that crap. Really if Morgan really Gibbs White cared, he'd stop taking corners. Yeah, don't give well, me that actually, crap that he cares. His 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 set pieces were slightly better, so I think. Yeah, they, they went direct to Henderson this time instead of the first man. Yeah, so if, just sign the petition, and he'll up his game <laughs> further. Maybe we'll even score a direct free kick against Fulham. Right? <laughs> well, they don't care. I'm sorry, they don't care, and I don't. Think, I don't know why I care if they care or not. Their football is their that's job at the end of the day. Thing. I don't care about my job. Yeah, I get that, but that's like it's just different. Right, so why should we, I we feel like they should care about this? We are supporters. Can we, just, can we just support for a bit? Can we just support for the next eight yeah, games, we'll and then yeah. after the season? We can tear into each yeah. other and point fingers and say, you said, I said, you know, hand the blame out. But uh, That's called sleepwalking to relegation, Rob. No, it's called, <laughs> that's how we stayed up last season, right? Oh, don't don't even talk about last season. It's irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. So, so, so by, the no, way, by the way, last, can I make last, something last absolutely... Season, just, Rob, Rob, hang on. You've had your 40 minutes. Can I just make something <laughs> absolutely <laughs> clear? Oh, it's time to open it To the... Uh, Happy Clapper Cooperites. Because oh, I want Nuno out, because I don't think he's good enough, that does not mean I, I regret Cooper going. Absolutely not. Too oh, yeah, no, I get you. Right. They're not mutually... They're not mutually... Well, they're yeah. not connected. It doesn't mean I want Cooper back, or I think he should have stayed. No. It was right yeah. when, he went, when he went. Just because I'm not happy with the replacement, that's no reflection. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you've got a girlfriend that's treating you like shit, and you, and you pack her in and go with somebody else, and they're not very good either. Loads of people go back to the old girlfriend. No, you left for a reason. You left for a reason. <laughs> wise, wise words from Ant there. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> words of experience. But let me jump in on that one because um, that's one point in your video that I didn't agree with, Wolfie, because who, what players do care about the club? Seriously, unless you've yeah, come through really ranks, unless you're like a Foden, which player at which club gives a shit about the club? They're, they're oh, all yeah. mercenaries. Especially at this level, they're all mercenaries. They're there for the pay packet. So I don't think that should be something like. So you I was do. right then. They don't care. How can you say yeah, you disagree? But, no, but I'm saying that's not that shouldn't be something that you you're getting upset with because that's not 
exclusive to us. Every club suffers that because the players don't care. They are just there to. I, I don't, I don't think that's strictly fair to say that is. I think, I a lot think of that's players, a majority. They, they, do, they do enjoy the club they're at. You know, if there's a club and they, and they love that yeah, club, but they're not passionate like we are. They'll and kiss and it, when exactly. they go to the next club, they'll care about that club as well. Well, yeah, they'll kiss the badge because they're paying them. Again. That's yeah, all they care exactly. about because they're paying them. Yeah, yeah, but, but I'm but, saying so you, it, to... it's unfair to say that they're you know ruthless mercenaries. They're just professional football. Yeah, but there's a way, isn't there? My no. point is this, right? My point is this: when I go to work, right? When I go to work, I don't care about the company. I don't care about the company I'm working for. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I do have some pride in my work. Yeah, I'm not gonna jump in front of my boss and take a bullet for him or her. Yeah, so they, they can damn well die. They can care less. You're a bodyguard my... when you don't be expected to. Well, I'm not a bodyguard, right? Yeah. But my point yeah. is, but then you could. There's people going to work just to turn up, sit there, and play solitaire on the computer. That's what we've got, man. We got 15 solitaire players okay, yeah. on our team right now. Maybe okay, maybe 12. But that's what I'm saying. They don't care. They just want to play solitaire. But and, and yeah, the, the biggest embarrassment, the biggest that's embarrassment was with... all this, all this social media that's been going on the last few days. How we should all come together. Yeah, the yeah. fans will do this and the fans will do that. This, this and then on the, the pitch, on, on the pitch, yeah, gone on the pitch. Well, I mean, um, for reasons we won't go into, I didn't actually get to watch the game yesterday, so I missed the first half. I missed the first half. We won't go into details, but anyway, so I didn't see what happened in the first half, but. One of the things that, um, from the feedback that I'm seeing is that again, we started off on the back foot. Mm. Why, after that mm. tub thumping media play that they put out before the game last week, I expected what well, I wanted to see us come out and really go out <laughs> and, and be the home team, and we just don't do it. We seem to be able to do it in the second half after they've had the rollicking. Most games would come out better in the second half. Why can't we start games like that? Why can't we start games on the front foot? So by the time I'd got back into the car, switched on the radio, and I don't know why, is they're just absolute jinxes. Any, any time I listen to the Colin Frey commentary, as soon as I switch it on, we can see the goal. I don't know what it is. It just seems to happen every single time. Anyway, so don't switch it on then. <laughs> and listen to most of the first half. And it's, yeah, the other option is listening to you. So you can yeah. listen to the watch along, you freaking <laughs> Judas man. I say Judas man. anybody actually do clear? They do care. They just crap. The, most of the first half I missed anyway. So what I saw was of the second half. So I'm I'm going to be a little bit slanted in my view, but I felt we played well in the second half. And once the formation was right, which was on the hour mark. I felt that we looked like a threat. But this is a problem. I agree that MG Dubs, given that extra space, given that extra time on the ball, actually looks really dangerous. Um, there was another opportunity where he flicked the ball into Chris Wood and his first touch let him down. But he was in the box and he found him in space. I think he works well as that. It's not even a quarter uh, um, quarterback role. It's a bit more advanced than that. But he's a, he's he's our best player on the ball. And the link up with Reyna was something that I enjoyed watching. And it was something that gives me a bit of hope as well going into these last few games. But so I'm biased. I'm looking on the second half. I felt it was all right. I said out of these two games, um, Palace and Fulham, I'd take four points. And again, I know it's kicking a can down the road because that's what we do. But I'd take four points out of these two games. So we've got to get those, those three points on Tuesday against Fulham for me. But it wasn't a worse well, performance from what I saw. But I can understand the first half was us on the back foot again. Let in. And this is, this is where my rant comes in because I said we should have started with Omar Bamadeli and Murillo. Every time they, they've come up against um, technical players this season, they've done really well. Up against the Arsenal back line, up against the Liverpool back line for the majority of the game, they did really well. And we came up against one of the... One of the classiest players in the Premier League, I believe, Eberichi Eze. I think it was fantastic yesterday. That boy glides on the ball. There was, an, there, was a, there was a move in the second half where he just literally danced between them. And, a, and it was a great save by Sells. Sells kept us in that game as well. But to play Felipe, and as much as I love him, but he's just going to have to be a cheerleader for the rest of the season. You know, um, a very sexy cheerleader, but a cheerleader for the rest of the season. Right, he might as well go be a fireman and get himself a deal in a calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make a calendar, yeah. But, but, yeah he, uh, I'm sorry. There, there's better plays ahead oh. of Felipe. I think he's lost it. He's lost that edge that he had last season. He was he was key last season, no doubt about it, but he's lost it. And um, it's about time that we um, 
leave him out of the team because he shouldn't be getting in ahead of Omar Delhi or Nia Kate for that matter. And obviously not quality if he's fit. So he's made mistakes again with a starting lineup and he's trying to fix it in game. But that Sangare Yates partnership is just not working. Terrific. He, needs to I mean, he, he, didn't, he didn't fix it in game because he put a langer on in the 10 and took Sangare off, which was mm. a weird it's yeah, so no, I know. Team. That was a bizarre decision. Bizarre decision. I didn't yeah, Also, that. can you say that, that everybody's talking about that second half as if we were playing like fucking Barcelona or something. Yeah. Fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. in comparison with the first half, it was a bit better. But in mm -hmm. reality, it wasn't good. It was shit. We were playing an yeah. extremely poor team and they mm -hmm. should have won the bloody game. Don't forget right, that. The last, the the last 10 minutes was what annoyed me. There was no yeah. urgency so, at the so, end. Hang on a bit, Rob. Hang on a sec. So, <laughs> I, I'll only give you a few seconds. So, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm getting a little bit wound up by all this, you know, we were better in the second half if we, you know, if we carry that into the full night. No, if we play it in the second half against, like, like that against Fulham, we'll get battered. Because Fulham are a better team than Palace. We weren't good in the second half. I was there, mate. I could see it in mm. front of my eyes. Nothing was working. We had one piece of genius by Chris Ward for that header. Had it not been for that, how many fantastic saves did their keeper have to pull off? Zero. Uh, let me think. I think it's nil. We were shit, man, in that oh, second half. Rainer had a shot. He, he yeah, had straight at him, though. Yeah. 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 It moved, no, it moved very, a bit in the air. Yeah. Uh, 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 like, as, I say, as I say, they could have won it. So mm. I'm not going to go on about if we play like that, you know, in the second half, if we play like mm. that in future, we'll be all right. I don't think we will. I think yeah. we're Nuno, awful. Nuno took the pace out of the team, though. It was obvious to me that Rigi can run past uh, their their wing back. He was. He's. I know. I know. Rigi's not the slowest person, but he wasn't as quick as their defender. If that was a lagger, he would have been running out of the more match. And we. I think we really missed that. You know, it's, it's the balance. Though, isn't one it? it's one the thing balance. Rich said. Yeah, but the one thing Rich said the other day is we're scared of your pace and you, you're you on the counter. Yeah, well, you don't counter with Wood and Origi up front. That's not a counter-attacking side. You need a Langer in there to 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 run the ball at the wing, and he 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 took that away from the team. But he stopped yeah. doing what he does. You know, uh, yes, he's out of position, but I don't know. Uh, he, yeah, his confidence probably position. dropped off. He's not he's not getting played, is he? No. It's like he's dropped. The one thing I can't understand out of everything is why has Dominguez been dropped? Dominguez was one of the best. We'll come on to that. We're going to come on to that. We'll talk, we need to talk about individuals. I was only what Rob was saying about the last 10 minutes of the game as he gets darker and darker in that book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I think um, one thing annoys me is if you look at the highlights packages that were put out by Sky and the BBC, it looked like we were being absolutely battered. But I... I seem to remember we had five shots on target, Palace's three, but their chances were a bit more dangerous. They did hit the post late on as well, mm -hmm. which was very, very scary. But uh, I think what really annoyed me is, you know, the last 10 minutes, we had nothing more to throw at them. You know, mm -hmm. in fact, we, we've, it, we were more worried about letting one in. I think we've let in so many horrible late goals recently that they, um, they weren't thinking about, hey, maybe we could score a late goal. It just felt like the longer the game went on, the more I, I thought Palace would be more likely to score towards the end. I think they were really hoping that the whistle would go. Well, to uh, be honest, Rob, they've conceded more late goals than us. So when mm, that stat yeah. came up, I was like, but Forrest won't do it. We do, didn't put them under any pressure, like you said. Mm. Yeah, sorry, go on. Vivek, no, I, I just felt like it, it It just went <laughs> flat at the end. And um, it's just really disappointing. But I think we're not quite at the stage that we were last season. I mean, last season, we had such a poor run of results. And we all thought that we were down after we lost at Leeds. Mm. And then I think it came to that Brighton game where it absolutely was a must win. It was literally like, if you do not win this game, you're going to go down, right? Was that and Brighton that, that, game after we'd just lost to Liverpool or Brentford? Well, yeah. I can't remember the order. I, I it was the, Liverpool, I wasn't think it? The, the point is, we're not quite... We're still eight, you know, still eight, nine games out. We're not quite at that stage. There's a You reach a stage where the nervousness should hopefully translate into, like, adrenaline. And I don't think they're at the adrenaline stage yet. They're, at, they're still at the nervous stage yet. So I think that we've we've got the capability uh, with the right eleven players to to have that kind of adrenaline and produce the kind of win that we did against uh, Brighton or Southampton or Arsenal at home. Those three 
wins at the end of last season. I think that that is still to come. I would have liked that yesterday, but I think that, um, I don't know, I think maybe somebody said, oh, Tottenham have scored, you know, uh, we're out of the relegation zone. They thought, right, don't fuck this up. Let's just end the day outside the relegation zone. But mm. it just seemed that as we got to the end, there was no threat at the end. And here's a cat amongst the pigeons. I thought our best player yesterday was Brennan Johnson. I agree with that. Oh, I hate you for saying that. I hate you for saying that. Because I was meant to say it in my video today and I forgot. <laughs> he did us proud. He did us proud. He, was the only, he cared. He cared. Yeah, I'll give he him did. he cared. Job yeah. on Luton. The rest of those donkeys didn't care. That was a joke. But, Can I yeah. just give a quick shout out to Warren? I met him on the on the way back. Uh, and uh, pleasure to meet him. Pleasure to meet you, mate. Oh, I'm sure you were in the best of moods meeting Warren at that stage, mate. <laughs> Poor no, Warren. I'll tell, tell you what, it shows the beard's working for me incognito because he was in front of me <laughs> and he turned around and he said, Forrest, I don't recognise the voice. So, you know, <laughs> he wouldn't have recognised me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry that you had to meet him after the match, Warren. That that would have been, yeah. And he, and he did ask where Ez was. I told uh, him. Yeah. Part -time. He, yeah, part -time, he, doesn't come, he only comes to the big matches. I told yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, man, no. Well, you've made you've made Nikki happy with with your hug. <laughs> okay, all right. Let, let's. Well, I'll be honest. Let's start talking. Oh, no positivity about... today. I'm fucked off. I tell you. <laughs> uh, well, well, I want to kick this off with the Sangare debate. I'm gonna oh, pull the pin oh, out. God, start badly gonna... like Forrest. I'm gonna pull the pin out. Chuck it in there. Because I, I think there's a hundred percent an agenda. Oh, by the way, um, do the players care was the poll. Fifty percent of you have said yes, and fifty percent of you have said no. <laughs> and that is so split down the middle. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and that's not a bid, says Ez. <laughs> so let's kick off the Sangare got, debate. This one. He wouldn't say <laughs> something like that. Mm. <laughs> okay, two questions on Sangare. Um, is there an agenda and should he be playing? Who wants to start us off? Chat, get your say. I'll, I'll start. Go on. Go on. Um, you know I've been a big Sangare fan. Still am. I still ho hope he comes good, but I'm really starting to doubt it. You know, being a star in the area division, you think about it, apart from maybe one or possibly two matches a season, you're playing against extremely low quality sides. So, exactly. of course, you can look good. So, that is sort of coming into my mind now. Have we been fooled? And don't talk about, about internationals. They're a waste of time. Anybody can play. Never Champions League. Maguire. Maguire plays for England, for God's sake. Yeah, Come lost. on. So, it means nothing. So, I'm starting to have my doubts. When I watched him, and I watched him very carefully yesterday, and my mm. God, he's so... The problem is, the ball comes to him. He looks at the ball. He looks up to where he can pass it to. And then he looks down at the ball again. And by that time, somebody's tackled him. It was time after time after time after time. Exactly the same thing. He'd get the ball, look down, look up, look down, ball's gone. You ain't got that time in the Premier League. You really mm. haven't. Now, in the Dutch League, he could do that and spray a beautiful ball out because there's nobody near him. So, I'm starting to get worried about Sangare. I've got to admit. Because, let's be honest, he's produced nothing. Nothing. Not even like, you say, ah, but in that game, he looked fan. No, nothing. So I'm getting worried about him. As for there being an agenda, possibly, possibly an agenda by some fans, not by me, because as, as I said, I was a big fan and yeah. I still am hopeful, but mm. real hope. So maybe, but there were, it, yeah. What worried me yesterday, he literally, he was starting to be getting to be booed. Every time he lost the ball, the boos were getting louder and it mm. got embarrassing towards the end of that half. And that worries me because that won't do any good to any player. I would never do that myself. Other people are entitled to, but I don't think it does anything for a confidence of player of yeah. a player when his home home fans are booing him, and they were there, trust me. There was booed at just, half time, and there was a cheer when he was sub. Yeah, there's a cheer when he was yeah, subbed. Yeah, cheer when he was subbed. Yeah, yeah. that's Which not I good. Don't agree that's with. Not good. Mm. Yeah, but you know, how I was, so was proud it that season? I used to say I used to listen to Leicester fans booing. I used to least listen to Leeds fans, and I said I'm so proud of our fans because no matter what, no matter the adversity, we stood by our team. That's gone, mate. That's gone. 
the yeah, but each fan is it's really up to them how they want to react. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm the... just saying. But does it help your team if being booed? Yeah, I know, no, I know. No. I, I'm, I know, no, I'm no, with no, you on no, it. No. I'm with you on no, it. No. I don't, I wouldn't do it. But mm. I'm just saying, if they want to, they can. Who's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who we, uh, yeah. I wouldn't have a go at somebody about it, but I don't think it's right. Yeah. But what was going on? I just want to ask who was that? Match? Rob, you were at, Ez, were you at the match? Wait, no. <laughs> I was at the game. Were they, what was it like when he was on the ball? Was there that what? sense of um because sometimes you feel it, don't you? I, I used to do it to freaking Grant Holt back in the day. I hated him. But anytime he got the ball, there was like I would groan. Maybe I was the only one groaning, yeah. but that, there was a groan. Yeah. Yeah. Was that yeah. what the uh, vibe it, was with him? It was not that bad, right? So it was. Um, it wasn't it, that bad. It, Take no notice of old him. It was. It, that it, bad. it started it badly, and then I think the problem is that he tried things that just didn't come off, right? And mm-hmm. uh, that uh, you can sort of get away with that in central midfield. Mm, no, yeah. he, he was. He was. You can sort of get. It you can't get away with that. As, and as hold, on, and hold on, and hold like on, hold on. Two-yard pass. Like and you can and he'd got, that he'd miss that. Uh, and That's you've had your forty minutes. And 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 you've had your forty minutes. And, 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 and he's right. Let him, right. He's talking so, rubbish. And no, let him I'm talk, and then you can talk. Right. Go on, bro. Right. So I don't like. I don't like these. Nobody else can get a word in. And come on. I don't like these agendas against players. Um, I think he was he. I it looked to me like he was trying, but he was trying things that didn't come off. And I think like his worst moment this season was if you remember in the Fulham game where he gave the ball away and we let in a goal from it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, it, it, he had a few moments like that where he was in two minds. He was trying to pull off a pass, and then he's ended up losing the ball. He, he lost possession a few too many times, and. Uh, it looked to me like he was trying, but it, he just looked out of sorts in the team. Um, I think that when he has put in good performances was when he was paired with Mangala. And I'm surprised you missed an opportunity to say that, And <laughs> in your 40-minute run. <laughs> no. Are you trying to gouge him back in, Rob? He's no, no, no. Play. Uh, trying to soccer him back I, I think in. that Sangari <laughs> has shown his best potential with the pairing with Mangala. But... Uh, we can't have this Sangari debate without having the Yates debate. And yes. if it was, if you're going to drop one of them, I would drop Sangare and I'll bring Dominguez back in and have Yates and Dominguez. Because then you've got two people who are terriers, box to box, and will cover the ground and will not lose you the ball in the way that Sangare was losing us the ball yesterday. So, uh, but I don't, I think he is being made a scapegoat a little bit simply because he's kind of emblematic of the the ne- the big names we've brought in that have not delivered for us and you could include Origi in that and some others as well that in that batch of signings from the start of the season hello by the way i'm rob i missed you on friday night <laughs> you got your one one you got your one one you bastard by the way i thought both teams were fairly evenly matched uh, I don't think Palace were bad. I think they look pretty good, actually. So shit. They were shit. If you, you look, don't know shit. <laughs> if you look at the table, football. if you, you look at the table, Part-time there's a reason why mm-hmm. we're on similar points to Palace. The teams were very evenly were matched. Shit. And it was a very nervous game. And 1-1 was probably the fair result. Wolfie, have I got time to run to the shops and buy a bag of popcorn? I, I didn't realise it's <laughs> And it's agitated tonight, Rich. And it's it, agitated it's tonight, Rich. Right? <laughs> so, so, Rich, you're probably going to get it both barrels if you try and defend your team in front of Ant. <laughs> they were shit. Your I'm, team was shit, yeah. mate. Can, can I say? Well, Rich. Um, I'm what, happy what, with a point. Yeah. Happy with a sure. point. Um, we should have had about three or four goals in this game. <laughs> so, like, don't get rid Um Forrest, you look dominated possession. But I did say our chances will be better off coming from the counter-attack. So I was happy we adopted that style where we... Because if we had tried to play against you lot, Callum hudson Adele was having a field day against Wardy, by the way. He mm. would have done that all day. Yeah, what happened, happened to your boy, man, that you bigged up? The Colombian dude. What do you mean? He, when you first his ch- ch- was a good little battle there. He, I think it was a decent little battle. And he nearly scored. Um, <laughs> so... I'm happy Why did you go so high pitched for that? A little bad, a little bad. <laughs> yeah, respect, respect my right back, man. I've had to suffer with Ward and Clyde for 15 years. I told you this already. Um, 
But honestly, Ebbs has got to put this game away. He's got to put the game... To, um, and that's The not corner? He's talking about the corner or the first half the, one? The first one. And I'm not going to discredit Cells because he was off his line rapidly. He was off his mm. line very mm. But still, Eze has got to put that away. The I think that's the one, first the time Cells has detached himself from a goal line. It was good to see. It was <laughs> good to see. <laughs> Sorry, go but, ahead. Um, the second one, I think that annoyed me more because if you're going to shoot, hit the target. Mm. Because there was a there was a tap in for Munoz if he just passed it across the box as well. You know, there's a well worked um set piece. I think for us, where I think we let ourselves down, not only just to finish in, it's just we took the lead and then we kind of just sat off a bit. Yeah. Um and you had a good you had a 15 minute spell in that first half where I was like, crap. Like it was like as as much as I don't think Henderson was like tested, you, you were the better side in those 15 minutes. Came out in the second half. Started off quite brightly again. Um, and bear in mind, the last, I'll say, 10 to 15 minutes of the first half, we controlled the game. Like, I think you're, you're not getting frustrated. Uh, we kept the ball a lot better. Came out first part of the second half, did okay. And then dropped off deep again. And then, funny enough, I'm going to give Crypto some credit here. Um, <laughs> he did. You're on the wrong did, show, mate. Sorry, he did Rob, all uh, uh, Rich, how many you got a show to go to? He must be being ironic. He, he's <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a little bit. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. He's being sarcastic. Yeah. He did say, drop Morgan Gibbs White slightly deeper and play Rayner. Now, you know, I will say though, I don't think that would have worked starting, but because you're chasing the game, it worked a treat. And Gio Rayner mm. caused us a lot of problems. Mm. He may not have been the ball as much as he would like to, but just the spaces he was picking up was moving up players all over the gap. Yeah. And um mm. would, Ray, uh, Rayner was yesterday not... was he, he reminded me of Dominguez. He's all over the pitch causing problems. That's what we need. Nuno yeah. Nuno Nuno sucked the soul out of the midfield, and that's that's what's pissing me off about it. Right. <laughs> And with, with the so there's been a massive debate regarding like from the Palace fan base as to Henderson's like whether or not he's at fault for the goal. Mm. First things first, it's a crazy header from Woods. Like it's a brilliant <laughs> header. Let's not take that away from him. I think with Henderson, he's either had to go all up for it or stay on his line. And he kind of mm. it's literally like a half a yard of hesitation. And that was literally the difference, you know. I've got to say, though, Rich, with... I've got to say, that that header had to be literally perfect Inch to beat him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Any other... It looked, it looked brilliant, Henderson, I don't think Henderson... Personally, I don't think... And this is not Henderson love. I can't stand the fucking git. Right? So, <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of... Thank you. Well, Why what, did what, did, what did Henderson do wrong? Henderson wanted to be a forest player. Mm. But he's not. wasted more he's time... Not. Yeah, but it's not the last three girlfriends put together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that time wasting from Henderson was him concentrating on how to kick the ball up the field. Because his kicking <laughs> still crap. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> I, what I mean by that, like it, brilliant header, like inch perfect. But I, you, when you watch the replay back, it's just the slightest of movements to his right that has completely yeah. done him. You know, it's such mm. fine margins. If he had stood still, I think he, I think he gathers it or tips it over the bar. But I, I don't want to blame Henderson for that. Um, I think Anderson fell asleep. Richards as well was a bit ball watching. But the build up for your goal, no mm. complaints. Like really, really well talking goal. What about your goal? I don't know who I blame for it, and I always have to blame someone. And we just get the credit. Like I've just given yeah, you lot credit no, for your goal. Uh, I always oh, it, that I pass mean, from Lerma was I brilliant. Did. Yeah, no, yeah, it's well, a really well worked goal. Oh, I, I it's a great give pass, pass, but it like, bisected yeah. our midfield and our defense. And how? Why is that allowed? Yeah, to but that happen? ball, that pass. ball was was world class. Yeah. yeah, but you have to blame, blame someone. You can't just yeah, not yeah, blame yeah, yeah, someone. <laughs> before, every I, I every I goal the has a culprit. Preventable, you know, and it, that it was ball, a be, like, be like Wood's goal. That ball by Eze had to be perfect, and it was. So, Although there's plenty of blame know, on there. The defender should have tracked Wood's run better across the goal. Henderson mm. could have stayed on his line. Yeah, mm. but on, on Palace's goal, I was like, maybe I could blame Yates. 
And uh, who was next to Yates <laughs> when he went through the channel? I'm stretching here. I'm stretching here. Maybe Murillo should have been more. Where was Felipe? Felipe? Yeah. You know, no, I think it was Felipe, but wasn't let it? Let me just do the yeah. super chat. Let me just quickly run through the super chat. Mike, thank you so much for the two pounds. Sangare is the least interested player ever. Uh, interested player ever game. Every game. Every to game. play the game, Every I think game. he means. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mike. That's a sight for the... I think I think it looks like the most least interested. Not necessarily. It could it, work either least way. Least it could work either way. Thank you though, Mike, <laughs> for that. Warren. Warren. Has he got has he got that cluffy tash in real life as well, Ant? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. I like it. Uh Warren with the three pounds. Thank you so much, buddy. And Chris with the two pounds, no speed, no control, no effort, but no agenda. I don't look, I don't mind if people want to call out Sangare for being crap. Yeah, I'd, I ha I didn't think he had a great game. But the fact that Yates gets away with it under the cover of the light of what Sangare did, as Rob was saying yesterday on that match, is just it's agendas. Um, it's there is isn't it? Huh? It's expectations. We know what Yates is, but we expect more. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's the, it's yeah, the but he keeps, play, he keeps starting it. Why does he keep starting Yates? Yates hasn't gone. I want to say a point yep. on Yates because it's it's we're now we're now nearly two seasons into the Premier League. Yates has not got a single assist, or is he? I don't think he's got a single assist. He hasn't got any goals in the Premier League. He has got assists. He, he's got two last he year. Got, okay, he's got yeah. some assists, but no, no one can remember those. So, <laughs> one against Everton. Like for Joe, yeah, John, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't count. No crap. <laughs> you can't well, say it doesn't count. And it was a shot. What I'm trying to say is, well, I'm trying to say is, fact. Stop it. <laughs> what I'm trying it's to say like is, is man. He, gets, he gets he gets played. He gets played in in effectively uh, what is a you know a central midfield position. He doesn't contribute anything to the attack. Yesterday he looked he looked okay once Morgan Gibbs White dropped back into the eight because he did quite a good job of defending. But crypto is that his not, job? Yeah, that's not no exactly. That's not the type of player we need, and I don't mm. think that's the type of player that he's being made into. But if from an attacking point of view, he sets up barely any goals. He scores no goals. His his passing is okay, but it's normally around the back, short, quick passes. He's not the type of creative player that we need. And when Morgan Gibbs White was dropped into the eight yesterday, the levels, the difference in levels is just it's unbelievable. And I don't understand, and I know we're going to get onto it, but I don't understand how Dominguez sits on the bench ahead of Yates. That is pissing me off. Uh, we agree. But I don't think Yates... Is, I mean, I think Sangari has got to take some blame because there is yeah. there is a pressure on yeah, he him. Was, he wasn't brilliant And there either. is an expectation on him. And he's not really showing any signs that he's... Yeah, but why about. is? Why? Why? I think it's the pace Why? of the Premier League. I don't yeah, think he's got to the pace of it yet. It, it, and I agree with you. Some pe players take, and we said this, I said this months ago, some players take more time to settle in. It's 30 million. Is that what you're talking about? The price tag, 30 million? No, I'm not on. I mean, price tag obviously weighs heavy on from some for, certain Forest fans' point of view, but we know. A lot. Reality, a lot, Ed. A lot. In, yeah, but we know in oh, reality. Oh, in nearly all. In Premier it's League terms, there's like... nothing. Thirty million is nothing in Premier League terms. We know that. No, it's as... not. I agree. Exactly, but there's can, a I, certain... can I ask Rich oh, on a scale of on a scale of oh, one to two? How would you rate at Sangari yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to a four, four, so give him a little bigger of a scale, man. <laughs> I think a little bit of devil's advocate on this JC thing. A little bit of devil's advocate. We saw a stat that Martin, our boy Martin, shared the other day. And it was actually surprised yeah. me. So Yates' yeah, tackling stats are the best, some of the best in the Premier League, which is really? surprising. Yeah, but, yeah, but that yeah. bollocks, because yeah, yeah, that's because he two foots everyone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He no, just no, no. bowls <laughs> it. It, it is. is. Yeah, you see, yeah, let him finish. A good nice. Let him finish. Let him finish. Go on. I, I, mean, I don't know how, bit, opinion, I don't know how this counts as the tackle when you got your arms all up, but it uh, his, his stats are up there. But so he's not the kind of player who's going to be progressing the ball. You can't. But you, what you can't do is play two number sixes, and Correct. that's what that's what Nuno's been doing. So uh, how why Dominguez isn't in the starting line? Like, I don't know what he's done wrong. He must have said something to Nuno, you know. But personally, he should be. He was for me the first name on the team sheet most weeks. And all of a sudden, yeah. last few, three or four game weeks, he's—I don't know what answer to it. Last three or four game weeks, he's not had Fixing a look. 
He didn't, he didn't even come off a bench yesterday. So I don't know what he's done wrong. But you can't play Yates and Sangari together, one or the other. And I'm not going to say which one I'd go with because, you know, it's just it's just an unnecessary... Drop them debate. both. I would say what? drop them both. I, I would pos- quite happily drop them like both that. right now, to be honest. I would. I'm, I'm leaving. So anyway, Rick, what did you think? Enough. We need to win games. We need to <laughs> win games. We need to be attacking. And that first half and the way we started, we're not attacking. And... It, and f- Teams are going to come here and just expect us to sit back for the first half and then they can just come at us. Fulham aren't going to be any different. And Fulham have got better attacking players than Palace, in my opinion. Um, so I, we can't start the game t- on Tuesday the way we started yesterday. And that needs to be fixed. And that comes from... Well, that's, on Nuno, that's on Nuno. That's Nuno's on Nuno. Nuno's the one who keeps exactly. choosing Yates. 100%. Nuno chooses Yates every single game. Nuno is the one who's making these these decisions. So at the end of the day, although although we can blame players like Yates, etc., it's not Yates's fault that his ability is is his ability. But yeah. you know he's he's trying his hardest. Let's not let's not get that wrong. Yates will be probably trying his hardest out there, but we can't blame him for for not being able to do a job that Nuno wants him to do. At the end of the day, Nuno needs to make the decisions and he needs to change up pretty quickly. Go on, let's give Rob a voice to his keyboard fingers on this. Just before just before you come in on this one, Rob, just very quickly, I've pinned onto um the I tried, chat. Rich. I tried. <laughs> I'll bring Rich in, don't worry. All right. Uh, I've pinned Rob. into the chat. There's we're doing WhatsApp updates on all things Nottingham Forest now. So if you want to join this new WhatsApp thing that's got that they have on there just click on that link it goes into your update status tab i really hate this new update on whatsapp but hey it is what it is so Mm. if you want to just join that um and just just put a heart on the the latest post on there so i know you've joined because we don't really know if it's working yet so uh if you could just click on that link it should update you into whatsapp it doesn't share any of your phone number information or anything like that you're fully protected um, so yeah, take a second to do that and please hit those likes, man. What are we on? Like 43 likes with 483 people watching, 114 likes. You can do better than that. Get those likes up as well. And the Rainer shirt, you've got till tomorrow to get the tickets in. There's a few left. Sign framed Rainer shirt with an insta win of Felipe. Um, there's about 50 tickets left. I'll put that in the chat for you guys now as well. Okay, Rob. Over to you, and if I, um, I'm just gonna go break my fast in two minutes, Rob. Yeah. So, you guys yeah. are gonna have to manage yourselves for oh the next my five God. minutes. <laughs> okay. No hope. So, no also, hope. Rob, Rob, Rob will be talking right. for the next hour. Can I go yeah. for two minutes oh, without Rob. being interrupted? <laughs> yes, yes, I will stop. control you. I will control when them when for I'm that. Finished, too. I will say I've stopped. Okay. So I think <laughs> that you need to you need some consistency here. So you cannot say. That oh we need players that care about the team oh but not Ryan Yates right that is completely inconsistent in this situation we need players over the next eight games with quality composure and commitment right now Ryan Yates is low on the quality he would probably admit that himself right his composure why does everyone always say that Rob? sorry I interrupted no, no, you, right, but... okay his highlight re- look. If you look at the highlight reel of Sangare from PSV, it's five minutes long. The highlight reel of Ryan Yates is about 12 seconds long, right? It would be difficult to make a great highlight <laughs> reel of Ryan Yates' career, right? So there's obviously, if you with the contrast with Sangare, couldn't be greater, right? Uh, in terms of the potential quality that Sangare should bring to the team, but Yates is in the team at the moment on merit for his leadership qualities and for his commitment and his composure. And I think that Sangare was trying things yesterday and he was lacking in quality and lacking in composure. Maybe he's not got the space that he's used to. Maybe he's not got the people running into positions for the passes that he had at PSV because at PSV he must have had all these wonderful options in space that he can spray the ball out to, like some kind of Gerard looking fantastic. And then with Forrest, he's looking up and there's nobody there to release the ball to. So it's a different situation. The two players could not be more different. But can we stop having a go at Ryan Yates, please? We know why he's in the team. I'm not saying that he's a technically better player than Sangare. But if you're asking for people with commitment, that is why he's in the team. That is why he's captain. My preferred partnership 
would be either Yates and Dominguez or Sangare and Mangala, but not Sangare and Yates. That is the worst possible combination. I've now finished speaking. I agree with that. All right, I'm just going to go Brentman first. You go um, first, bro. I don't know where Ant went, but he wanted to ask no, Rich about no, Sangare. Rich, before... give your view on Sangare and Yates. All right, I'll be back in five, boys. <laughs> Right, let me just, before you carry on, let me just bring up this couple of super chats that we got and then um, you can jump in. But uh, we got this one from Noah. Boys, tried looking for both yesterday. Looked everywhere. Couldn't find you. Was woeful yesterday. I've backed Sangari, but after yesterday, I can't. Um, Noah, I wasn't there, but Ant was, well, I was there, but I didn't get in. Ant was there. Um, yeah, we'll have to sort something out um, earlier. Next We're in the time. same place every game. Every game. Yeah. Yeah, we are, to be fair. If you if you anybody and not just for Noah, anybody wants to meet us before the home games, we are always outside the fan zone. And I repeat, outside Yeah, the fan yeah, zone. we don't go directly outside sorry, it. You can't the miss exec it. sorry, if you want to mention we're standing where the executive entrance is to the yes. to the to the ground. Under under right the, the fan zone. So yeah, thank you, uh, Nikki, for the uh, sorry Noah for the four ninety nine, and then we've got a couple of uh, members as well. Seventeen months for Victrius, fantastic, and a super chat from uh, our boy Chris Chris Brown. Uh, Danilo and Dominguez every game till the end of season. Ooh, Who wants to take Danilo? that? We Who haven't mentioned that? Danilo at all, have we? Well. Yeah. Who wants Remember to jump, him? Andrew, jump in on that? What do you think? I mean, would you go with them yeah, too? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I 100% prefer uh, Danilo and Dominguez over what we had yesterday. You know, um, mm. yeah, why not? I mean, Dominguez, as we all know, is very tenacious, gets about, puts ah, so much work in, keeps the opposition under pressure. And Danilo, I know people have been on his back this season. I haven't. You know, mm. I think, he, he, yeah, he has struggled. I'm not going to deny that. But I still think that there's quite wait, there's quality there. The guy has got quality, and I think a run in the side alongside Dominguez, who will, as I say, cover a lot of ground. So you know, Danilo's not having to run about so much. Yeah, I think that could work. Don't you? Do, do you not? Do you not think this this thing about running in the side though is too late? How can we give people a run when there's only eight games? Yeah, that yeah, that, that's a point. Okay, now. okay, let, let, let's put it different. You're right on that. So put it a different way. He could come in and he may rediscover his form. And if he does, we know what kind of player he can be. Yeah. But have yeah. we seen enough yeah. signs of it this season, And not, No, no, we haven't. But, you know, we live in hope. <laughs> I mean, I don't <laughs> think he's turned into a bad player, has he? He's had such a stop-start yeah, stop kind of season. He's never really got into that groove for whatever reason. You know, injury, poor form, etc. I mean, it's an area of the field. Is fit and, uh, and in good form. He's, he's one of our I, best players, surely. I mean, it, this is my frustration. It's an area of the field where we have an abundance of talent, in my opinion. Yeah. And he's constantly picking the wrong pairing. And it's mm. too negative as far as I'm concerned. But w no idea what Dominguez has done wrong. He'd be straight back in for me on uh, Tuesday night. Danilo so, is one yeah. that maybe he, he works. He might work better off the bench, but because we know Dominguez yeah, doesn't yeah. make yeah. Dominguez doesn't make ninety minutes, does he? You know, very often. The, he's the, the, off that's after because he's running for everybody else, isn't he? Exactly. Yeah. The, thi exactly. the thing is, as well, even even Dominguez's like bad games, should we call them, are still better than people like yeah, Ryan I Yates. And yeah. I know, I know, Rob says. We shouldn't sit here and slate Ryan Yates every week, but you know that's the only way we go. No, I don't think we should. I don't think we should. I, I don't think it's a straight comparison it's between them. Really point to the first team, Rich. What mm. do you think of Ryan Yates? <laughs> don't <laughs> get rich. Um, he's basic. <laughs> yeah, he is basic. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it. That's yeah, what you're get <laughs> squad squad player. Yeah, you bring him I'm in when you need to rat about. Yeah. That's I swap him for oh, water, yeah, mate. Yeah, swap. <laughs> what is different class? Yeah, um, he's not experienced, man. You know on. what? Wax lyrical so, about water because he was brilliant. Sangari was poor yesterday, unfortunately. Mm. The thing is, I, I think he's someone that will come good for you. You know, I think he's. I believe so as well. But I believe so. But I think it's also important for him to have the right midfield partner. Yeah, as well. I'm always like, is, we. It? we Whole season of um Chet DeCorey and Will Hughes and Chet DeCorey yeah. had way too much work to do because Will Hughes was just terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. So um yeah, I think yeah, that's a bit of an unfair comparison though, because Will Hughes is crap, Derby scum. 
You know? Yeah, but uh, to be fair, Rich, we've all, been asking, Sangari, DC, we've all been asking playing, for Sangari yeah, and Dominguez. Yeah. We've been asking for Sangari and Dominguez, and we still haven't yeah. seen that as a pairing. And that, for me, I still think, what, for whatever, whatever reason, and I said in the last stream, but I will just want to see. And if it doesn't work, I'll shut up about it forever. But we have not seen Sangare pa paired with Dominguez because I think that's mm. a partnership that works better because they can work, they can pivot because one can go, one can stay. But um, Dominguez's work rate is second to none. But like Ant will say, and most of the guys will say, he's burnt out by the 60th, 17th minute most games, you know. So he needs somebody who's yeah, going to take that, some of the pressure off. Because at that point, that's when Morgan Gibbs White could drop into the eight. There's, yeah, there's options there, but Nuno's not playing them. So, guys, I'm just going to go and break my fast as well. So I'm literally leaving you guys in charge. So I'll be back in five oh, minutes. No worries. The, the okay. thing is, Crypto, with, with Gibbs White uh, dropping into the eight, I don't think that would work if you're winning the game. No. I think see, because so, like, yeah, that's an interesting point. It. Yeah, so we, we've had this discussion before, which is uh, now, now as and Wolfie have gone, we can actually talk about this to our heart's content. We had an excellent player called Mangala, right? Yeah. Oral Mangala, shout out Oral Mangala. He was brilliant at, at controlling that kind of CDM role. Um, he was. It, yeah, I 100% agree. It, it's 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 talented, different tactical players. Danilo, for me, is an attacking player. If you pair Danilo and Dominguez, that's an attacking, basically, midfield. Whereas if, if you can uh, pair Sangari and Dominguez, Sangari is a bit more, you know, holding the midfield as Mangala would have been. So you can change it up. But that's that's what Nuno should be doing. What I don't want to see in there is just the same old every week when it's not working and people can can clearly see it. Um, but, I mean, you know, we won't, we won't talk about Mangala again, but when we had that control in the midfield, we looked a lot better, a lot better. And then it stops yeah. the pressure on the defence. It stops the and free ball. Basically, Crypto, we, we swap Mangala for Sangare. And I'm sorry to yeah. say, at the moment, there's no contest between which one looks the better player at the moment i will i will always say that but i think mangala is class and will remain class we've yet to see that from zangare so i know which one i'd rather pick in the side and, he so, had, and he i'll had say had no more on mangala yeah he had the pace as well and and he could read the <laughs> by the way by the way rich there. by the way rich, mangala is our player he's actually on loan at leon right now ah yes 12 million, but because we've got 12 million loan fee, that's why it was PSR thing. We got rid of him. So he's still our player. He's on loan. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why and I get so frustrated because he's our player. These lot here, wink, hint, hint, said, uh, said when Matt, when, when Martin Gall is gone, it's only going to be three games, it won't matter. Sangari will drop him with Dominguez, and it has. Don't think happened. I can't hear you. Don't think I. Sangari <laughs> 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 <think I'm laughs> and Dominguez. <laughs> Are you not talking fair, about Mangala? To be fair, Mr. Mr. Wolverine about, actually about actually backtracked a little on his video today regarding Mangala. So kudos to him. Take yeah, a big no, man. Yeah. Look, all I gotta say, right? Well, people need something. When I do my videos, right? <laughs> they're, they're mostly one takes. Okay. <laughs> and I was angry. That was, you know, what angered me even more was I did that last night, and I shouldn't have done it in the heat of it. And I set it to go live at eight o'clock this morning, and I set the date to the first of eight. Everything's gone wrong. I, I, I just, I just hate football. I hate football. Sorry, but yeah, um, Mangala, we need him. I'm sorry, we need. Him. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. But, but. You got you got two sides of this football debate, haven't you? You've got the um the pitch side and the off the pitch side. So we needed Mangala off the pitch and on the pitch. That's the problem. He's become doubly important. You need two Mangalas because we needed the money that he generated with that loan fee. Because it, it's blatantly obvious now. If you look at one of the things in the notes of that 52-page document, they said mm -hmm. specifically they got the Mangala out. They're showing signs that they're trying to be more responsible um, with money and what have you. Yeah. So you need two Mangalas. That's what I'm saying now. I'm saying, clip it. Not only do we need one Mangala, we need him to have a twin brother somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and that's well, definitely, that, and that's well, definitely that never, gonna, never gonna be wrong. 
<laughs> Would you agree with that? Two <laughs> mangalas? I've gone from no mangalas to two mangalas now. <laughs> ba- basically, Rich. We, need, we need a whole world of mangalas. That's what we, need. <laughs> Rich, we all live in a world of mangala. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, all you need to know is that everything I've said is basically right. You know, you know what I would me. say? You know what I would say, Rich? <laughs> we need that Warburton bread guy, man. He was pretty damn good. I thought he controlled that midfield. I think Rob, you mentioned it earlier yeah, as well. From come on, Forrest, look who was against fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's been brilliant since he he's he signed in January, and especially losing Chet the Corey for the rest of the season as well. That like, it's so good to have a player that's actually comfortable on the ball <laughs> in the middle of the park. So yeah, that's what that's all it is. Though. It builds confidence around the team as well. If you've got a guy who can control that midfield, then it, it's massive. Like I say, stops the, pr- the pressure on your defence. It can help in, you, in the attack. It's just massive. I mean, look at someone like Murillo. Murillo gives confidence to the rest of the pitch that he can stay back there and defend, sometimes single-handedly, because he's so strong and quick. <laughs> and he, he was doing it again yesterday on, on some points. Um, we need we yeah. need a player like that in midfield. <laughs> Honestly, the fan base was so annoyed with him yesterday. <laughs> with who, Eze? Yeah. Why? Because his misses? He could have missed it, yeah. Two big yeah, chances. But he, at least him. he was in hey. a position to create those, isn't it? Yeah, but we can't be missing these chances. We did it against Luton. We missed so many chances and then drew that game too. Yeah. Rigi's mm. always, always in the pace to... to... Oh, he was right place, shocking, right by place. the way. <laughs> right place, he but was... he never does anything. <laughs> yeah, he shouldn't have, he been, he should have been started. Yeah, but we know this, Rich. We know it. <laughs> Nuno doesn't. Nuno has. Nuno's clearly not been to manager school like we have, because it's so obvious <laughs> to us, but it's not to him. Mm-hmm. Listen, just a quick shout-out to Rich. Yeah, um, Guys, make sure you're subscribed to back... Whoops, wrong channel. Sorry, I just copied. No, no. Rich, uh, something back uh, in the nest is what it. Big up to D as well. Legends of back of the nest, but <laughs> equalized football. Sorry, Rich. <laughs> it's there. Subscribe to Rich. Uh, have they? Have you got to two K? One point nine six. Right. Forty more oh, subscribers on, needed. You guys can do that. Sort them out because we all love Rich and his popcorn, yeah. And what a legend for for coming on. And hopefully, Palace stay up so we can play them next year in the Premier League, you know, because we're staying because you'll be there for sure. Oh, yeah, (laughs) yeah, right. (laughs) But yeah, um, Rich, you got a stream coming up in a minute, haven't you? Yeah, talking about the exact same game. Yeah, so, yeah let's sure. so what I want you guys to do after this stream go um raid Rich's stream and just see if he's as genuine as he is here or is he just <laughs> playing up to the forest fan base right now because all they be talking I about I'm very you. happy with my point thank you very much I'm, I'm actually <laughs> no I'm annoyed I actually I'm annoyed that we this is a game we actually could have won based on the yeah. chances that, yeah, that you should have definitely scored more oh that's it yeah it do you think like do you think a draw was a fair result Rich yeah, it was. Uh, you had more control of possession. Like I said, I feel you'll be disappointed that you didn't do more with your possession. Like I said, I don't think Henderson was tested. A few shots from outside the area, which he saved, which he saved yeah. <laughs> um, in the second Bastard. half. But I think first half where you had that 15-minute spell, that's when you could have put us to the sword and you didn't. Mm. I, I'm yeah. depressed. I'm depressed. Okay, so make sure you subscribe to Rich. Are you still around, Rich? Do you need to jump off for for your thing? I can hang about. I'm sure there's some more entertaining Ant versus Rob. So I'll hang about for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, by the way, people, for you out, you lot out there that think Rob and I are gonna, you know, have a big scrap afterwards, we're actually sitting next to each other for the Fulham game. So. Are you really? Someone, wow. someone texted me about Sangor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, here come lifetime bans from the city ground Tuesday night for, for Robin and <laughs> two elderly gentlemen were discovered fighting and ejected <laughs> face down in the pile of beer. <laughs> <laughs> one, <here> everywhere. <laughs> one thing I will say with this Fulham game, by the way, because I know you got them on Tuesday, I believe. 
that Munoz, I don't know where Fulham found him. I know. But like he's on fire mm. at the moment. <laughs> who, who is he? Who is he? <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> who is he, man? He's so annoying. But I do let, let's move let's move on to that, Rob. Right. <laughs> What are you thinking about Tuesday, man? We said, I think the majority of the fan base was in agreement. We needed four points from these two get home games. We needed, ideally, the three from Palace because they're crap. No offense, Rich. <laughs> no offense. No offense, mate. But but Fulham, what, I, I, I don't like playing Fulham. I just historically don't like playing Fulham. It, I... The last joy I had against Fulham was it against Fulham where we were three one down and beat them like five three a few years we, back. Uh, we no, beat, no, we beat one them one nil away ground. in the Championship season. Yeah, we, we from, did beat them beat away, away at their ground. Zinc and Argyll. Uh, yeah, it's Cooper's assist. Cooper Cooper got an assist with the throw in, didn't he? Yeah, that one. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 No, the, but they're since a bit then, of a bogey team for us every time. Mm. I mean, they they, they last beat time, by the way. Didn't they beat us three nil? At our ground in the championship as well, but we did beat them away. Oh, yeah, they did. The like, Amadas, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah, did. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think the team is going to be very different on Tuesday night. Oh, I think there's going to be three or four changes. Uh, so it's really it, it could go either way. It could go either way. I think the most likely result is another one-one draw, isn't it? I mean, it's going to be yet another one of these. Uh, can't lose games where we kick the can down the road and then Luton will probably get beat at Arsenal and we go, oh, look, we're one point clear now. So, uh, I don't know, Fulham are very inconsistent, aren't they? So, you know, it could be like when we beat West Ham or, or Villa at home, we could 2-0 it or we could nil 3 it. But I think the most likely result is that we just get another bloody draw. So, I mean, I, out of the two games, it was the Palace one that I was really had my hopes on. And um, fair play to Palace. I think they were a good match for us and it was probably a fair result. I don't know with Fulham. Could, anything could happen. Don't can, ask can we just think. summarise that, Rob? Can we, so you think it'll either be 2-0 to Forest, 2-0 yeah. to Fulham or 1-0? <laughs> yeah, You're not begging your, begging your bets or anything, no? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's partly how we, how we start the mean, game mate. as well. I know if what we, you mean. If we go out there and we start the game like we started the last two, getting completely overrun in midfield, and we're, we're trying to claw our way back into the game, it could be really quite horrible. So um, I think we've got, I think the midfield is what needs fixing most from that game we've just seen. So uh, whether he starts with Gibbs White more deep and then has either a Reina or a Danilo in front of him somewhere or a Dominguez, I don't know, but some rearrangement of the midfield is required because that has been the weak point in the last yeah. two games. Bye, Crypto. Ben, you off? He's gone. Yeah, I gotta go. Uh, All right, mate. Go, uh, I'll catch up for you later. Good night, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'll, I'll use this opportunity to, to go as well. Get myself set. Uh, there's, guys. No way I'm miss, there's no way I'm missing the buffet. I love you guys. <laughs> 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 uh, see you later, Crypto. And Rich, yeah. thank you as well. And yeah, make sure you go and subscribe. Up. To Rich, um, if you want more content about the Forest Palace match, it's coming straight up for you. I think you're kicking off at eight o'clock, aren't you, Rich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very we'll thanks, Rich. We'll, we'll just stop this now and go over and abuse Rich on this channel. Shall we just do? Well, we'll get it. We'll, we'll wrap up Feel in like five free. minutes. Yeah, but, <laughs> but we need, we do need to cover the. Um, all right, Rich. Piss off yeah, now. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I said you're welcome. Go, yeah, Rich. Bye. Go. Go. <laughs> My God, I hate long goodbyes, man. There we go. Fine. <laughs> now we can talk about Palace properly. Now he's gone. Right. So I want to well, talk I about think, this. I think I was quite plain in what I said about Palace doing from like first word. <laughs> <laughs> you were shit. No, you weren't. You were shit. Because uh, let, let's talk about this Fulham game because this will be technically our preview on it. Here's my mm. stance on Forest matches going forward. I am going to predict Forest lose every match they go into until Nuno and the team give me a reason to feel like we're not going to lose. That's how I'm feeling right now. Okay. I, I, I kind of agree with what Rob said. Well, you have to agree with what Rob said because he covered every scenario. So within those scenarios, it's going to be one that, that you do agree with, right? But I just, I can't, I can't feel confident with these players, 
with these charlatans, with this manager, with this club, with everything's just going wrong this season. And it's like, stop the season right now. And keep kind of carrying us from my boys, isn't it? But I, I just so my stance now going into it is I, I expect us to lose because I want to be pleasantly surprised when we don't. That's me. We're not losing. Mm. Mm. Great. That's you Rob's just jinxed it. What, no. I want to jump on what Rob said earlier on where he's saying we have to get our attitudes right because the players aren't obviously doing what we need on the pitch. But if you start saying like you're fed up with the players, you're fed up with the manager, what are we supporting and what have we got left to support? Is it just the, the ashes of Nottingham Forest? We still got to get behind the players and we got to get behind the manager and we got to get behind the club. We've got it. That's our part of it. We can't give up, man. They can give up, but we can't give up. So I've got to be positive about this game. It's another home game against a team that we should be getting something out of. And if we can't get wins out of these games and our season is over so i'm going to be positive i said i wanted four points out of these two games it hasn't it's not going to happen the way around that i want it to but if we get three points against fulham i'm, I'm more than satisfied with the re re return from these two games yeah, but it, doesn't it just feel like we keep kicking the can no, down the road no, no, no. This can, is can, I, can, I add a point. can I add a quick point? So if you yeah. look at the bottom of the table and you look at the little mini league we've got, the bottom six, right? Yeah. And you look at the last five games, there is one W there in mm. 30 games. And that is when Burnley beat Brentford. Everybody else is drawing and losing, right? So I think draws are underrated, right? A draw got us out of the... The, the relegation zone yesterday. Now, I'm not suggesting mm. that we can go and draw every game until the end of the season, but I think that'd be good. better than losing, right? So, that'd be they, enough, yeah. I mean, everybody's enough, frustrated. Yeah. Everybody is frustrated, but a point is better than nothing. And the final thing I'm going to say is I saw Forrest get relegated three times in the 1990s, and all of the three times we had the same thing in common, which is we didn't have a goal threat, right? This mm. time, we've got Chris Wood. And uh, I believe, Cristiano Woodinho, yeah. thank you very much. This mm. time, we've got Chris Wood, and he has got quality finishing in his locker, right? So mm. that, mm. on its own, gives me some hope about this scenario but, that we're in now. But just to just to flip that round, because there has been a lot of negativity towards Nuno these last couple of weeks. Should Nuno not be given credit for Chris Wood? Because Chris Wood was absolutely crap under Cooper. And he came to life from basically that Newcastle game. Yes, he scored a few early on against the crappy teams like Sheffield, etc. But he does look more confident on the pitch, even though he wasn't brilliant yesterday. The goal was sublime. But shouldn't Nuno mm. be given some credit? We can't just be like, oh, Nuno's, Nuno's got credit for plenty of things. Well, huh? I would give Nuno credit for plenty of things. He got, yeah. He's got the best out of Dominguez as well. I uh, don't know why he's dropped him, because Dominguez flowered. Um, <laughs> well, we've still got a one you remember. A one you could be back uh, next week. So, Oh, he's uh, done, man. And Ant's well, already well, sold him to West Ham for 50 when we, million. When we've <laughs> gone down before, we had a, a lack of goal threat. And I just think uh, Wood has got that quality about him. And that's the kind of thing that gives me some optimism about the remaining eight games. And um, Yeah. Well... You're set. Your section to talk, man. Mike, we can't shut you up when someone else is talking. Yeah. When it's like what, over Fulham, to what, you, what the Fulham about? game. No. We're talking about the yeah, Fulham no, game no, here. No, 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 no. Listen, Ed said something a, a few minutes ago where he says, "If we've got no like confidence in the players, we've got no confidence in the manager. What have we got?" Or worse to that effect. Mm. I do have. I still have confidence in these players. I think the good players. It's the manager yeah. that I have confidence in. Sorry. We've seen what these players can do against the likes of Newcastle United, Manchester United. We've seen the qualities there. But since then, we've gone into this ultra-defensive uh, um, mess of a, a team selection, mess of any sort of patterns of play. And that's down to the manager. That's down to the manager, literally down to the manager. Mm. You bring in a better manager, you'll get better performances from our players, in my but opinion. But could you not argue that's down to the players as well? It's always down to the play. It's always a joint thing, isn't it? But at the end of the day, why are some managers great managers and some managers not? Why is Pep Guardiola a better manager than Southgate? 
if if they have no effect, if they don't matter, nobody would mm -hmm. mention it, would they? But trust me, Southgate wouldn't have done with Manchester City what Pep's done and vice versa with England. So managers do make a massive difference to the way your team performs. Yeah? Do we agree on that? So no, I absolutely agree team, on that. But I've, so if your I don't team's think... not performing well, as then for me, the first person I look at is the manager. If he keeps making these rudimentary mistakes and rudimentary mistakes, getting that centre-back pairing wrong, getting that centre-defensive midfield pairing wrong, if he keeps doing that, then I will join you, Ant. But I've got to kind of try and keep hope that he will get it right and he'll learn from his mistakes. But we keep saying that week, in, week out, don't we? He's going to get it right. He will learn from his mistakes. But I'm not seeing enough signs of it. Um, yeah. I just hope the guys did Are you know. still Nuno in, Ez? Are you still Nuno in? Yeah, I still... I, well, I mean, I have to be for the rest of the season. I, I'm I'm Nuno I until... Sorry, Ed, I 100% understand that. I understand that. Just bear in mind, I was so fucking angry after that match yesterday. And I'm still... I don't know if you could tell, but I'm still a little Good bit luck on now. Tuesday, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a little, I'm still a little bit angry now. So obviously I'm going to overreact and I may change my mind in, a, you know, well, I say a few That's days. Are you changing your mind? <laughs> <laughs> we got Fulham. I do change my mind if, if I'm proven to be wrong. But I mean, I know it doesn't really happen, but you know what I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> but <sighs> let's say, okay, I mean, just, uh, just purely hypothetical. Let's say the performance is as bad as it was. Yesterday, but we get the three points. Does it change your opinion? Because that's all I said about last time. But I'm not mm -hmm. bothered about how Nuno plays, or uh, he's he's not on trial for me. We, we will review it in the summer, and Forest have to. But we need to just get the results, and I don't really care how we play and how we get go about. I agree with them. that. I, I agree with. I agree that I would rather pay absolutely terribly and win one nil than play mm -hmm. like Barcelona and lose one nil. I absolutely yeah. agree with that. But we're talking about. We're not just talking about getting through this right now. Oh, we talk about him as a manager. Long term, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, let's ask that question. Forest survive at the end of the season. This is different. There's a quick poll in Nuno in or out for you guys in the chat. But what about this? Put that fence in again. Cut. You put that fence in again, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, on the on the official yeah, poll, people win out. You're letting people win. There's 23% win print out. Well, I've also done a poll on the community tab. Make sure you vote on that as well. I will send that to the club so they can get a a flavor of uh, of where where you guys are at the moment. Mm -hmm. So make sure you vote on that community tab. But here's a question. I was watching Football Focus, uh, Forest Focus, sorry, yesterday. And uh, the guy they had on there was saying that come what may, up or down, Nuno should be gone in the summer. So where do you guys sit on that thought process? Yeah, I knew Mark could go on the fence. <laughs> so if, if Forrest survive, um, mm -hmm. sorry, Rob, would you want to see Nuno get a whole preseason and the whole of next season? Or do you think we just need to kind of clean slate it again, Forrest style? Um, don't make me sit on the fence, but, you know, ask me... <laughs> What I'm not making you do anything, mate. Okay. If we get relegated, you need three scenarios, then, mate. If we get relegated, obviously that's a black mark against Nuno. And does that mean he's then lost his authority? He's not then the person to get us back up? I don't know. But I would say let's look back at the last couple of decades at some of the utter crap managers we've had in the championship, right? Mm. And Nuno is head and shoulders. I don't want to name any names, but Nuno is head and shoulders above most of the jerks that we've had in the um, championship. So he should be, but you know, he should be given uh, a preseason and he should be allowed to uh, make the team in his own image because he's been dealing with players that were bought at random for another manager for another system. So, you know, Maybe he's not the kind of person that rescues you from a nosedive. Um, mm. But, you know, we uh, he's he's way better than who we've had in the championship. So I would think it would be a step back if we... Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Who else is available? I, I, I'm not looking to make the change. I'm, no, I'm not talking now. I'm talking in the summer. I'm talking in the summer. Probably available in the summer. Yeah, I, I do think, obviously, if you've got the team relegated, then that is a, a black mark against you, you know. Oh, and, uh, mm. 
I mean, if we got know, relegated Exeter, from this point in, I wouldn't be blaming Nuno. Exton got us relegated to League One, and he was not the man to get us out of it. You know, he should have gone straight away. So uh, we maybe should have learned from that. But it, it's a question of how much do you blame Nuno? I mean, I must say, I'm getting a bit sick of him saying, oh, we need to improve. We need to improve. That's mm. his stock phrase. We need to improve. It's like, mm. any time now would be good. Um, you know, we're still looking forward to that improvement. If you notice his buzzword is solutions, he always goes on about these. We will find solutions. That's his main buzzword, isn't it? Yeah. Shortly yeah. before he picks the fans up, just to you know, make sure everybody's on side. That that's yeah. been fed into him. That we've yeah. talked about that before, and haven't we? That from from the day off, you can tell it was a marketing thing that just always mentioned the fans, always mentioned the fans, always mentioned the fans. The, but, there yeah. isn't a lot of affection from the fan base. I've never heard anybody singing his name at the ground. And uh, mind you, haven't yeah, said that's that. Fair, Rob. Yeah. Is that fair? So, sorry, I don't know. I think people people are basically the jury's out on him. If he keeps us up, I think there'll be a huge amount of relief, and he'll have a lot more support next season. If we go down, he may be jettisoned in order to get rid of the sort of stain of relegation and, you know, rebuild under somebody else. But all I would say is we shouldn't necessarily throw the baby out of the bathwater because he is head and shoulders above uh, the dozens of crap managers we had in the championship. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't think it would be necessarily a good idea to completely self-destruct if that happens. Mm. What are you saying is, what would you do with Nuno in the summer? Um, certainly, with all scenarios. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah, look, you've got to have a look at both scenarios, staying up and going down. If we go down, though, uh, the blame's not solely on Nuno. It's all the shit that happened before. And like I said, not just Cooper. happened this season, for the last 18 months, you know, the mm. messes we've made in our recruitment, in our backroom team, everything has to... Um, be part of us going down if we do go down. But I don't really want to think like that. Saying that, if we do go down, he's one of a... He's definitely proven at that level. He's got... He got Wolves up at a canter. Yeah, and this is the other side of it. The George Mendes connection. We haven't really seen that coming through. We've had one transfer window. And that was a really scattergun approach transfer window. A summer under Nuno and, uh, and um, uh, Mendes bringing certain players in. I think I'd like to see that, regardless of what division we're in. So I wouldn't be too quick to, as um, Rob used the word, jettison him. I don't think he's the problem. But like Ant said, I do need to see improvement. You know, um, I'm not that bothered. Like I said, we get results for the next few games. If we get enough results to stay up, that's all that he had to do. When he came in, I said, that's his remit. All these people talking about finishing top half, of, um, top half of the table, and all that. I think that was just too, too hard to look at. Looking at what was going on before, because there's this problem with Nottingham Forest, which goes deeper than the, just for players. There's, there's a malaise around the club, and we need to break out of that. And sometimes you do need a change of manager to change up. But I would stick with him. Uh, regardless of which division we're in, because I think he's a quality manager. We're just not ha given him enough time. He hasn't had his players in, as um, one of the guys mentioned in the chat. They're hardly his players. Let's give him a chance. Let's not fr throw the baby out with a bathwater. Um, and, and let's just hope that we're not in a position where we have to decide where we're going to keep him for a championship uh, promotion push, but rather than we're sustained in the Premier League and we just got to push on next season and a lot has to change in the summer regardless of where we are yeah and i want to ask you because obviously your stance on nuno is where it is right now here at the moment and what have you right, right now <laughs> yeah 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 mm. but my, my thinking here is worst case scenario if forest go down if we sack nuno who the hell can we get we're no longer a premier league club you can't be talking but about like some etc i just didn't really, just didn't really cool when when people were on about sacking cooper and asking you who you said that's not my job. There's somebody. No, 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 no. I'm just thinking ahead. I'm not talking about you want him out now. I haven't said to you out now who do you want in. I'm talking thinking about championship. Oh, I can't believe we're doing this. Thinking about yeah, championship. Yeah. Wouldn't he, yeah, as I, Rob was saying, he would be a cut above championship level managers, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But You're not convinced. Know, like, like we say, we don't know who would be available and who would be willing to come to us. 
So it would be a case of settling. Oh, God, imagine that happened. <laughs> imagine that happened. Oh, That's God, the day man. I... I, I we had Steve no McLaren, didn't we? We, had we Steve did. McLaren, we did. Yeah. yeah. And uh, let me ask you this. <laughs> Nuna out tomorrow and you get Southgate. What are you no. saying? No. I'd rather have Nuno <laughs> given a 35-year contract and have Southgate in for one day. <laughs> can, I, can I add a Absolutely. quick point? What, no, one of the, it's my turn to be. All right, I thought you'd finished. I was waiting for <laughs> to Guess what? Go ahead, get your point in, and then we'll jump back to Rob, and then we'll do yeah, score predictions you know, for yeah, Fulham. You know me, I'll be quick. As, really? I agree with what Ed is saying, reg absolutely, regarding it's not Nuno's fault that we made all these silly signings. It's not Nuno's fault that this happened. It's not Nuno's fault we got a four-point deduction. I agree with all that. However, it is Nuno's fault. It keeps picking the wrong fucking team and playing the wrong yeah. fucking tactics. Yeah, that is his fault. Yeah, that's his Agreed. job to get that right, and he's not doing it. Look, I am really fed up at the minute, and I want the guy gone. I don't think he's got a clue. He reminds me so much of Steve Cooper. It is unbelievable. Con constantly picking the wrong side, constantly playing the wrong tactics, constantly making balls ups with his substitutions. I see no improvement. Look at his record. What is it now? One win in ten? Mm, That's yeah. a quarter of the season. Things and what do we put it down he to? Good. He ain't good. He ain't good. Get With rid. Cooper, we That's said it was Cooper FC. Right if we win the next eight matches 3 0, I might change my mind. But right now, get him out. He Come on, what is talk he? Like Cooper now. Well, I'm starting to talk like yeah. Cooper now. Yeah, we'll he work is. hard on it. We'll work. What's the answer? Do you think now? Working harder. The fans, they're wonderful without them. Oh, Ruby's like shaking. Cooper? <laughs> the whole so room is shaking, Ed. Hey? <laughs> the whole room is trembling. When with... <laughs> you do that, yeah, oh, you use this camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, motion sickness. Right, it's two points now because I have to respond to Ed. Right, so oh, here we uh, go. Popcorn. Well, it's kind of, but it's it's kind of the same point, which is we. I think we all agree on the selection errors that we we see that yeah. Nuno is making, but I think he is under pressure to pick the likes of Sangare and Origi. And I think the problem is, with our club, we had such a revolving door of managers that the uh, player recruitment, the, the selling and buying, was taken into a different team, and we've got a coach. So now the, the coach is somebody that has an input into who, uh, who we sign, but they're not the, you know, the, 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 the recruitment, the buying and selling is done by uh, the Scottish man and the Greek man, right? So the, none of these players are Cooper players and none of these players are Nuno players. So I think um, I, I'd like to see him in the summer actually have some choice of who comes in and who goes out. And maybe the club needs to restructure a little bit more towards giving the actual managers uh, more say in the transfers because... Basically, you're just giving people, you're throwing toys at somebody and say, make something out of that. And it hasn't worked with either of the last two managers. And the only last thing I would argue about, you know, why is he picking Origi? We see Origi as being like a selection error at the moment. But it comes back to what I said before. You need players right now with quality, composure and commitment. Now, Origi has scored in a Champions League final, right? So, you know, Ryan Yates has never done that, right? So mm. I, I think that Origi is in the team because he's thinking if he could just produce that, a moment of quality, a moment of composure, then it'll all make sense, yeah? So that's what he's in for. But, you know, I think the problem is that the players that are in the team based on their quality are not showing their commitment. And the players who are being picked based on their commitment are not showing the quality. So we're getting like kind of the worst of all of the players at the moment. But I think that's why the likes of Sangare and Origi are being picked. I think there's pressure from above. There was pressure on Cooper, the same. If you remember, Cooper jettisoned all those players that played at Fulham. He picked his favourites and we got an away draw at Wolves. Why do we mm. think that's going to be any different with Nuno? So he's under pressure to pick some of these players and that's why we're getting the questionable selection. I think that Tuesday night we will see some big changes and I hope that it will be changes for the better. I think that I think I'm thinking four or five changes for Fulham. It'll be a very different team. But are we just not. I'm I'm honestly getting sick of 
team changes week in week out man there's no consistency yeah. I'd, I'd take your point on origi i don't think origi is the be all and end all issue my be all and end all issue is his six and eight selection he can't he's not getting that right mm. and when he's bringing Alanga on he's putting him in the middle and that for me is just criminal yeah. so origi, a nine or a ten he doesn't yeah. play that position Why it's, it's not his position him? And it goes back to what Ant said. Cooper did that. Cooper started playing Alanga. Yeah. When he was starting to go downhill, he played Alanga as a false nine. And it mm. wasn't working. And I don't know why Nuno's making the same mistakes yeah, that Cooper made. Similar. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. I so I, I can forgive the Origi thing because mm. you can kind of see what he's trying to do. It's the other key fundamental issues that I'm for me back. are the problem. We've got pressure well, from you know, above. Yeah. I've got this horrible. I've got this horrible feeling on the last day of the season as we get relegated. Nuno turns around and pulls his mask off. And he's <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I never left you. you. <laughs> I never left oh, you. That's okay. Scooby Doo. No, let's. let's yeah, let, let's finish with some Fulham predictions then, guys. Get your predictions in for Fulham down below. Uh, as well, that <laughs> Right, I'm just going to be positive and say 1-0, one 1-0 nil, one nil win, anything, anything, I don't care how it happens, I don't care if it's a shit game, I don't care if it comes off somebody's left bollock and goes in, as long as we get the three points, that's, we need three points on the board, but W is well overdue, man. So let, let me go second, because I'm going to be negative, we're going to lose 3-1. <laughs> so um, uh, uh, until, until I see reasons for, for otherwise, I, I can't see anything but a loss. And yeah, well, I went 2 0 with Palace, didn't I? So I'm going to go 1 1. Okay, that's a little less negative than me. Um, Rob? A little bit. <laughs> oh, uh, saved you for the end because I was kind of hoping you're going to say a win. One Hardest one to predict, but I will say 2 2. I should say a lot of goals. The end. <laughs> They've just had a 3 3 at Sheffield. It's going to be a game like that. It's going to be a really yeah. unpleasant and difficult watch. You could be right. You could be right. Because, yeah, because that 3 3 makes you think they can't be that good at the back, but they must have some scores up front. Yeah, and, uh, about Munez, man. I don't know where he's come from again. We've really? kind of touched on it, but he's just on fire. Yeah, we've got Murillo. We have. But we're, we're going to play. Two strikers aren't they more than like honestly? Though, if, if we take the lead, we'll drop off and they'll equalize, right? If they take the lead, we'll pour it on, we'll, we'll equalize, and then we'll drop off away. again. It's <laughs> it's gonna end up as a draw. It's gonna end you up as a draw. negative, man. If we want oh. if we want to finish on a positive, there were some positives from the game. I thought Sells was excellent. I'm yeah. really comfortable with the guy now. Not just his saving, but his distribution was really good yeah. yesterday. He, he put him out the ball for on Tuesday now, and Huh? And he just played like Which a sweet blue pro on Tuesday now, now that you've said that. Yeah, yeah. No, well, okay. Hey, you know, I was very, I know you didn't rate him that highly, Wolfie, but I thought he had a really I good game. Didn't. Really Did good I not? Game. Yeah, and I was uh, so pleased. In my head, I liked him. Bit. Huh? Did I rate I him low? Uh, in my head, I yeah, thought he had a good game. Or something. I, you know, I thought he was better than that. I thought um, he was so, yeah, I thought he had a really good game. Murillo, I thought, was good. Again, people were saying that it wasn't one of the, his best games, some of his covering again, maybe you don't see it so much on TV because it's focused on the ball. But mm. some of the times mm. he was running back covering was, was outstanding. Mm -hmm. Um, Nico, I thought was okay, I thought yeah. it was okay, yeah. not his best game, but it was okay. Rayner was a bright spark. Callum was see, I'm see, I was look how negative I was, but you know, this is why I blame the manager because I saw some decent performances out there. Mm. I thought MGW played well in the main. Did his you know normal stuff? Second half, Callum yeah. and Adoy, you can see what a difference. And you've pointed this out before, Wolfie. What a difference it ha it makes to him having an attacking fullback with him. Yeah, yeah. Callum and yeah. Adoy was. I thought he played really well. Yeah. And there was one part. I don't know if you noticed it, where he ran right. To, he's a, he's a playing left wing, and he ran right the way back to the right back right position back. to make a tackle. Yeah, yeah. And well, honestly, three left Felipe, Felipe came up to me afterwards and it also it was like <gasps> you know, mm, really, but he made so don't say he doesn't care because he he was the last yeah. he was the last man and he's a left winger. So yeah. props to him as well. Chris Wood, great goal, didn't do anything else, literally didn't do anything else. Mm. But props to him for the goal. Um so yeah, so this bright spot, he's just gotta get but did you notice I missed the midfield out in, in you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well he's gotta right, go right, right. right. He's got to right. Right. He just needs to pick the right place and put them in the right place. And we do yeah. have a decent team. 
Yeah, so the centre back's right. Point. If body's fit, body comes straight back in. There's no no question about yeah. that. But, um, yeah, If and not, I would then definitely bring... say I'm a Bamadeli ahead of Felipe yeah. as well. I'm sorry. I'd yeah. pick I'm a Bamadeli first anyway. choice if everybody's fit. He is my first choice. Not ahead of body. He's not ahead of body for me. Oh, he is for me. Okay. Uh, anyway, I've got to go. I genuinely Yeah, let's, let's wrap it up the there, guys. That. Yeah, so thank you for watching. Please don't forget, hit that like if you haven't already. We're on yeah, 166. Please. Get it up to 200. Uh, we might have a preview tomorrow with Jack from Fulhamish if we can find the time because it's a quick oh, yeah. turnaround. Otherwise, there'll be another video. Now that tempers have come back down to normal, everything can go back to normal on the channel. Hope you've enjoyed the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks to all the guests and shout out to Rich. Go check out um, cool. their live right now if you're looking for some more content. Come on, you Reds. You Reds. You Reds. You Reds. You Reds. You Reds.